Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lost in the Real, the director's series, where we choose a director and we go through all of their films chronologically. And then at the end, we'll each provide our ranking of those films in order of best to worst. And our first director we've chosen is Xavier Dolan. And this week, we are taking a look at Mommy from 2014. <laughs> Mommy was obviously directed by Xavier Delon and came out in 2014. It stars and or involves Suzanne Clément and Antoine Olivier Pilon. Mommy is about a single mother with a teenage son who struggles to control his erratic and sometimes violent behavior in a hypothetical future Canada where parents of troubled youth have the legal option to commit them to public hospitals. All right, Sean, so what did you think of Mommy, even though I already kind of know? <laughs> Uh, this is probably my fourth time watching this, and I get something out of this film every single time. I think that what Xavier Delon here does here is uh, kind of miraculous, is he takes such a small and intimate story and really just makes it feel epic. And uh, I know a lot of people have said this film is capital drama and melodrama the whole entire time. Uh, but I, and it, it can be, but I think it works so well because you really do feel for these characters and all three of their lives are in such turmoil in, in three different ways uh, that you really connect with them and what's going on. I just, I love this movie. What about you? Yeah, um, I haven't seen it this many times. Actually, this was just my second time watching it. Um, oh, well. Yeah, um, I will say I had kind of a couple bumps in the road watching it this time around. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not quite at the level for me as uh, Dolan uh, anyways. Um, but this is really great work. This is one of his best films. Um, it's definitely extremely ambitious. I love the interplay um, between Antoine Olivier Pilon and Andorval. Andorval here is magnificent. Suzanne Clément is magnificent. Um, Antoine Olivier is really good. He has some trouble here and there, but I mean, he's a, he's a young actor and certainly astonishing acting for someone so young. Um, yeah, and he, uh, you see a lot of Xavier Delon's, um, sort of, I guess, trademark, uh, sort of stylistic choices. Um, but there's also a huge difference here and that's the aspect ratio, uh, ratio, which people have called pretentious, whatever. I think it's a really great choice. Um, it really closes you in with them and with everything that's going on. And yeah, this is a this is a special film. This, of course, is about mother son dynamic um, and what that kind of love means. And anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a really good companion piece to his first film, uh, yes, I Killed My Mother. Yes, and yeah, you yeah. can see, it's so interesting because you can see that obviously he has this crazy undying love for his, his mother, Xavier Delon does. Um, but also this like this, not hatred, but like this because his films are about mothers and sons who love each other like unconditionally, but also they are, have such angst with each other. It's a frustration mm -hmm. that, you know, they just butt heads. Yeah. And in the case, in the case with, I mean, both, maybe it's because of all their similarities. Like he hates the things that remind him of the things that he wishes weren't true of himself. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point, That's definitely. Very interesting. But Dolan always wants his characters to succeed. Like, you can really tell he loves them. He wants them to get where they want to be. And the fact that you can feel that and that that does not always necessarily happen. Yeah. I think is really great. Um, the ending to this film always hits real hard. Mm -hmm. um, I actually rewatched it. Uh, my first time around uh, a few times, the final maybe 15, 20 minutes. Um, 
like really potent stuff. Uh, you always get a really strong emotional uh, connection with Dolan's characters. And of course, he's amazing with actors. I mean, this is uh, acting on the level of the acting in like Cassavetes early films, um, mm -hmm. those great ensemble pieces that were all, you know, improvisation and this dynamic, uh, almost brutal energy between people who know each other too well and maybe are and maybe I maybe are stuck around each other too much of the time. Yeah. yeah, I definitely I think here in Mommy and I've been waiting for this, uh, at least when I saw it in theaters for the first time, for him to give Andor Val that performance that he gave Suzanne Clement in Lawrence Anyways, and yeah. he does it. And I'm so happy that this film doesn't uh, follow uh, Steve, like you, any other director would make this movie about Steve, I feel like, but he made it about Andor Val's character of D. And I love that. And Andor Val is a vision here. I think she, it's probably, I know I said this about Suzanne Clement and Lawrence anyways, but uh, this is one of my favorite performances of all time too. She just gives it Every, like she encapsulates the role like it's not her anymore and it's it's heartbreaking to watch her sometimes because you can see the love that she has for her son but also she has to make some tough decisions as well uh in regards to him uh so it just i oh, i could watch her all day long <laughs> yeah most definitely and suzanne clement is i think i read an interview with him where he said he kind of felt like he cast them in opposite roles as he had previously done. So you have Andorval, who's <laughs> just astonishing here. And then Suzanne Clément really has this, it's almost uncanny. She becomes a totally different person. She's this very quiet, kind of mousy character who has her own troubles. Um, and their final scene together is one of the great ones. Mm -hmm. It's one of the so, great ones. It's really- I want to reel it back a little bit and talk about that aspect ratio. Yeah. Uh, do you think what does that aspect ratio how would you say it is it one a one one aspect ratio it's one to one it's actually the original uh cinematograph aspect ratio just a square so what does that aspect ratio mean to you in regards to this film uh i mean as with anything i think it's just a an artistic choice to me it makes sense because any kind of shrinking of of an image shrinks your perspective and it's to play with the feeling of kind of claustrophobic kind mm -hmm. of feeling and you know um a lot of mental illness is very uh, like a very isolated and closed in feeling and this is a film that explores mental illness and the unpredictability of um home life with mental illness and these kind of behavioral and emotional uh instabilities yeah I have two different thoughts on the aspect ratio. Uh, the first one, which I think is a little bit more obvious and uh, to the point, which is not uh, what Xavier Delon is known for, but I can kind of see the aspect ratio almost being like how the younger generation sees the world through the eyes of their smartphone. Uh, when I first saw this movie, that's what it meant to me at first, but after watching it multiple times, I've found it, and it's this is kind of like what you were saying about uh mental illness and um just feeling this confinement and the, the suffocating presence of this psychological prison in your mind that's the aspect ratio and then those few moments where they open up the aspect ratio to what we're used to in most films that's almost them freeing themselves from that psychological prison that's exactly right there's that really wonderful moment where uh, he's riding the bike and he just leans back and he's listening to music and he he opens up the aspect ratio for us and you can see in that moment like it's the first moment of like real, real pure joy that he's not like putting on in order to you know keep at bay the the boiling up inside of him it's a real moment of freedom and joy from him and yeah it's I mean if you, I think it's even just on the Wikipedia, there's uh, an excerpt from an interview with him where he totally denies the like Instagram aspect ratio thing. Um, 
and says it was more about the original uh, cinema ratio of one to one and how that, I mean, that was like the old handheld cameras and they could get into smaller spaces this way. And he knew he wanted to be in those intimate, smaller spaces with these people. It's yeah. really, yeah, I think it's a really nice choice, but I mean, when a, when a filmmaker chooses these things, I mean, it's almost unimaginable to me to have seen the film in a different way. Like, mm, exactly. To see this in like wide screen the whole time, I don't I, I can't picture that because that's not what was given to us. And right. I, you know what I mean? I I wouldn't want to see it any other way. Yeah, it's it was meant to be filmed this way, it, it, and it it feels that way when you're watching it. And I know some people are immediately like, "Oh no, I don't want to watch that." I and I, and that bothers me that people feel that way because if they if they just surrender themselves to the film and just get over the fact that it, yes, it's in a different aspect ratio, you'll see that this is how this film was meant to be made and to be filmed. Yeah, I mean. Those people are fools, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> okay, Chris, so how many Xavier Delon heads would you give Mommy? Uh, easy answer. This is another five, five out of five Xavier Delon faces. Heads on the face. Or wait, the other way around. <laughs> how about you? How, how, many, how many faces on the head of Xavier I, Delon? <laughs> I am going to say this. I I will stick to my guns and give Mommy five out of five Xavier Delon heads as well. I think this is a phenomenal piece of work, uh, and I think it is also a really good starting off point for viewers as well who maybe aren't familiar with him to start here, uh, because I think it is a little bit more accessible than some of his other movies. But I am going to say this, uh, and I, this is the only time I've ever noticed this. It might have been the mood I was in. But this time around, I almost felt like at the very end, I was watching The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, because there are, I felt very like there were a lot of endings to this movie. <laughs> Did you not feel that at all? No. Uh, and I, that's so funny you mentioned that because I read that. Uh, a couple other places, um, just kind of gathering, you know, other people's thoughts and stuff, uh, a couple of reviews, and then watching it again. I told you this was just the second time. Uh, and I told you before I'd, I'd rewatch that final like 15, 20 minutes uh, mm -hmm. after my first viewing a few times. And I don't know, it doesn't feel like that to me. Mm -hmm. the, the ending feels very natural. If anything, I like so desperately would like to see like one more bit with Suzanne Clément uh, and her character. Um, so I, I mean, if that was multiple endings, I would like a few more. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I agree with you. Like I, yeah. I could have, I could have had even more of this film, but I did feel like there were like multiple spots where this film could have ended and then it kept going. But that was the only this time but watched for me. Were you upset that it kept going? Absolutely not. <laughs> exactly right, because as Roger Ebert, RIP, said, no great film is too long and no bad film is short enough. Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for watching Lost in the Real, the director series. Next up in Xavier Delon's filmography is It's Only the End of the World. We will see you then.